Hey everybody and welcome to IGN's tentatively titled Overclocked Podcast. <laughs> uh, this is our PC podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mitch Dyer. I'm joined today by Marty Sleva. Hi everybody. The seminal PC gamer himself. Yeah. Uh, and Dan Stapleton. I'm I'm actually a seminal. You're PC the, gamer. You are you're our actual seminal PC gamer yeah. at the office. Is that like a Native, a Native American seminal? Sure. Is yeah, that sure. a thing? Yeah. That's I don't a, know that. That's term. a real Native American. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh, so, so we have podcasts for uh, Beyond. We have the PlayStation podcast. We have Unlocked, which Marty and I do. But we don't really have a PC podcast here on IGN, which means we're not talking about a lot of really interesting, cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, PC is the biggest platform in the world. It has the most stuff going on. So we're here to talk about it. We're going to have some special guests on the show. We'll uh, get some more IGN editors in here. But for episode one, hey, it's us. We did it. We're here. We did it. And no one's going to cry in this episode. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Well, that's, we'll see how things. We'll see how the next forty-five minutes. Go. We'll see how it goes when Dan and I talk about StarCraft, and you are confused. The day is young, Marty. <laughs> uh, so I think the most interesting and notable thing going on in PC gaming right now, Dan, is uh, the Arkham Knight Tragedy Hour. I don't <laughs> oh. know what well, else to call it. Start out on on a high note. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a matter of family, the DLC that you just reviewed. That's the add-on content uh, starring Barbara Gordon, which I reviewed on Xbox One because it's not out on PC. How because, about that? Yeah. Is the game out on PC? The game is out on PC. Okay. Defi- define out. <laughs> so I saw a news story this morning too. It's getting recalled uh, in Australia or New Zealand. There's a no. It, it was the um, the Australian GameStop or some some yeah store. EB Games. EB. Yeah. Okay. So they, they sent back their stock. Uh, oh, wow. Because it wasn't going to be fixed in time for it to be worth them holding it in their storerooms, taking up space. Which is insane, because the memo they got, allegedly, from Warner said that that game's going to be broken through September, which is when they're expecting the next patch. Right, so, I mean, they, they said, like, Australian Spring. Wait, which is our... Which, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which... <laughs> that is real confusing. Australian yeah. Spring is the name of my memoir. <laughs> how, how do seasons work? Um, yeah, Globe. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be a while before they they get it up to the the level they they hope it will be at before they put it back on sale. Mm-hmm. Uh, which yeah, that's that's not real good news. But it, on the on the other hand, it is good news that they're going to wait until it's actually fixed before they start selling it again. Yeah. So Dan, you've been covering PC games for longer than Mitch and I have probably combined <laughs> been in the industry. Uh, yeah. I mean, have have are there other ports that have been this sort of horribly managed yeah like what well, was the last yeah, game that had this dark game? souls yeah oh man yeah <laughs> but the thing with dark souls is wasn't it i mean it's Modders not it's it. not an excuse but modders fixed it which is a terrible excuse and mm-hmm. from was like or not probably namco was like hey it's fine we fixed it it's like no you no can't you didn't do, do anything <laughs> you absolutely can't do that yeah it was that, that, game, that game i mean to be fair it wasn't like super glitchy and crashy mm-hmm. but the technical quality of it was awful yeah uh, it was locked at 720p and upscaled even if you if you cool yeah if you raise cool. the resolution like a top tier pc port yeah. is i yeah. mean to, to be fair like in that case it didn't look worse than the the console version sure. it looked the same it as the console version. yeah um but yeah like the controls were bad uh like the the ui was just the bare bare minimum effort yep. to, to port that over i mean does this stem and, from oh also it had games for windows live which is rip awful. <laughs> good riddance <laughs> i mean does this they, stem, they got rid of it does this stem from like just them being like hey we don't think we're it we're gonna have enough sales on pc to warrant the money that's going to be put to actually get a good port or is this just afterthought or is it you know yeah i don't know how arkham city did on pc i don't even know how arkham knight did on pc i I would assume pretty well those games you know did did fairly well as far as we know it was a top seller on steam when it was broken right so (laughs) doing all right well yeah i mean that that's like all the pre-orders and everything yeah of course uh I mean, they they've always been respectable. I mean, I I don't think they've been like shattering PC sales records. I've always sure. played them on PC because mm-hmm. I prefer playing those games with mouse and keyboard. Um, I, That's real weird. Well, I, I yeah. like being able to whip the camera around real fast, and I like being able to, to uh, not have to mash several buttons at once right. to execute a combo. Not That's so weird. Not so weird yeah. anymore. No. Yeah, I get and it. Also, it, it looks like the past games have looked markedly better on PC. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw my uh, PlayStation Three though. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw my Arkham Origins on Wii U. <laughs> okay, like, Wait, did that happen? No, it was yeah. Arkham City on Wii U. Oh, yeah. Oh, With yeah. With all, like, oh. all the touch. Yeah. I, I had to review uh, Arkham Origins primarily on PS3. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, coming fr- off of playing City on PC, it's like, wow, this does not look as good. I imagine I you have... like a gorilla, like, what is this thing? <laughs> just, I just pretend just you the... have glaucoma. Yeah. Every <laughs> just the texture quality alone was yeah. just like, you, you couldn't, you, like, at 720p and low resolution textures, you couldn't even really see, like, the, the texture of Batman's suit which was yeah. which is really disappointing but anyway the so, the pc version of arkham knight uh it still it still looked good mm-hmm. like it it you know next to next to arkham city like if you put those two games side by side it looks good mm-hmm. yeah uh problem is it doesn't look good 
side by side with the PS4 or Xbox One version, yeah. which is hugely ridiculous. problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, and they they have fixed some of that stuff in a in a patch that they put out since they pulled it from shelves. <laughs> Uh, we they, patched the game you can't buy. Yeah. They, they fixed some of it, not all of it. Sure. Um, but and you know, to be fair, like a lot of people still have it. Uh, if you didn't, if you didn't return it, you still own it. Uh, but you didn't. Uh, if you bought the season pass, sure. That's what I was just going to ask, right? Like, if you paid forty dollars for the season pass, you now not only can't return that, you can't. You also can't play the downloadable content because I'm actually not sure. Maybe you might be able to return the season pass. Okay. Um, I would actually be surprised if they turned anyone away from that. Can you do that on Steam, or would that be through WB separately? It's through Steam. Okay, you, you would that'd be interesting. Steam. WB should do a mea culpa with this. Of like, Seriously. Here's, well, here's, here's Shadow of Mordor. Mordor. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, they, should, they should honestly give all that DLC away for free. To yeah, all totally. On PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's just to save face. I mean, they. it's the weird thing where, I don't know, and maybe this is just because I play a lot of free-to-play games with cosmetic purchases, but I feel like charging $40 for a season pass where the vast majority of the content is skins is absurd like you are already paying sixty dollars for the privilege to pay more for stuff to look slightly different yeah i mean and, you know, I, I wrote an editorial about that a few months ago when the, when they announced it uh about announced the season pass was gonna be forty dollars and didn't really tell us what was gonna be in it yeah um and they still really haven't because right, there's a lot of stuff to come and we're like okay you're doing all these episodes but what are they right so so batgirl was the first month uh, second month is just going to be skins and a, and a new Batmobile. You can't even drive around Gotham. It's just for is that the Batman eighty nine one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is cool. But, yeah, but totally like I cool. can't drive that around Gotham. It's yeah, just because then it can't transform into a tank. I'm imagining yeah. it's that makes it the best Batmobile it. in the whole game. <laughs> right. But I I don't I don't oppose the tank. Like I I, I think it, it poorly it fits poorly in there, but it's still I think uh, yeah. The thing I was fun. I think we were talking to you or maybe it was on a show earlier this week. I was like the tank combat is good. I just don't want it in that game. Right. It's just not it's not up to the level of the brawl. Or predator fights. Yeah, yeah. It's also just inappropriate. I think. Oh, just doesn't fit the game. Is the predator in it? <laughs> oh, yikes. Sorry, dude. Batman v Predator. <laughs> Batman v Predator coming soon. That, that actually has happened in comics. <laughs> of course. Oh yeah, has. there was that like short film where Batman fought the Predator. Oh, like, also, there was a fan made. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. I did yep. not see this. Uh, there, there's there's also a Batman Aliens crossover in the comics. Man, a, no, no, a Paul W S Anderson classic. <laughs> <laughs> where, so is the, where, where how's the how's the Batgirl DLC just as a like how is it? It's I mean it's okay. Yeah. It, it's pretty much. Pretty much sad to say what I expect from from Batman DLC. Like I haven't been impressed by any of it. Yeah. Uh, it what like, about Cold Heart? You didn't. It was it was that was probably the best of it. Yeah. Uh, but it's still just kind of a short, uh, Side story thing. thing. That's it's like, oh, here's Mr. Freeze's story again. Yeah. Yeah. It's always disappointing when the DLC is structured like a comic book one shot. Yep. It's not even like a small arc or anything. Like I'd be surprised if the Arkham episodes are connected episodically in any way, shape, oh, or no, form. Not at all. I'm sure the next one will be a Nightwing thing where, oh, Batman's been kidnapped because everyone <laughs> in Arkham gets kidnapped and you just have to go fight some guys to rescue him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, and part of my editorial for, for uh, you know, why it's absurd they were charging $40 for this is because they, they haven't had a good track record with DLC. It just hasn't yeah. been impressive. Uh, I would not recommend paying $40 for, like, the entirety of the DLC they put out. I, I think the challenge maps are the only thing I've liked, and those... And they're not that good this time around. They haven't done any. Like, yeah. they, they've done... They they have the AR challenge maps, which you can't swap in characters, which is, like, weird, because that's, that's something you'd think you could do in a command line. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that too. Yeah, it's 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 kind of weird. And, like, especially after all the outcry from from people who are really into it, it's like, hey, I want to play as Asriel in the, in the challenge sure. maps. Let me, let me do that. Uh, you would think that they would just sit, like, say, okay, let's do that. Because like, it can't be that hard to do. Yeah, I mean, Asriel especially, who's just a, I mean, most of them are just skin swaps, but well, at least, and, like... And the, the, the missions with Asriel in, in the in the actual game are basically Asriel challenge maps. Yeah. yeah. And I can't go back and replay those. Yeah, without, yeah man, good point. Like, that's weird. Yeah. Can Rocksteady recover from this? Because I know a lot of people are laying the blame on the, the feet of WB Montreal, who made this DLC, for it, like, not living up to certain standards or whatever, like... For me, it's well for the DLC or for the, the, the DLC. PC port? Well, <laughs> did Montreal do the PC version as well? Uh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they've done the PC version of the DLC, but the DLC on PC is not out yet because right. because okay. it's all like like well, we're mess. not selling it until until. So selling. the quality of the DLC is setting a rough standard, and people are saying, well, the Rocksteady ones will be better, but that doesn't make it that doesn't make that forty dollars season pass any better. Like this is just constant a constant series of errors for them, mm-hmm. where everything yeah. along the way is like, 
Well, that's not very good. Well, that looks bad. We that's have, unfortunate. We have no reason to believe that the Rock City DLC will be any better because the Rock City that. DLC hasn't been any better for the last few games. Yeah. So, uh, and like this, this one wasn't bad. It was just really short. Sure. Yeah. And and insubstantial, like, self-contained. Like you yeah. can't so again. You can't play with Batgirl anything beyond that that map. Yeah. Which is dumb because you went to all the effort to create the, the that model, that character model, and not let me do anything with her. Like, yeah. It's like after that hour. Yeah. Come I, on. I feel like the way that all of this ends on a happy note yeah. is that somehow the last DLC allows you to play as someone else in the DC universe. <laughs> as it's like an hour as Green Arrow or Wonder Woman That'd or be awesome. Superman. But which would, you'd insane. have to completely it could, revamp yeah. the, the mechanics of the But how, ama- the how amazing would Green, that be Green as a Arrow finale? Would be cool. Green Arrow would be cool. Yeah, I think even Superman. like them's like Superman would not work. That would be bad. <sighs> I think, every I think time you punch a guy, it's he just that flies shotgun through noise. <laughs> and he just flies out of the city. The walls explode like when a Batmobile <laughs> drives through it. It's just Dragon Ball Z at that point. Yeah. Um, can I would play that? But yeah. So, so to answer your question, can they can they can recover? recover? I'd say the only way to recover or to save face would be a Game of the Year edition that fixes all of this stuff. Um, that you then have to pay for again. Well, are you talking about on PC specifically, or, or yeah. are you talking about the deals? Like, you're talking about a bunch of different things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of problems right. to cover here, Dan. So, so saving face on the on the PC, I would say give everybody all the all the DLC content free. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I think that would be that would be an appropriate mea culpa. And Ubisoft's been really good about that, right? I think it was... Yeah, after Unity. <laughs> yeah, Unity was such a mess. Uh, and there was the, also being the... Being good about cleaning up mistakes is such a such a well, sad yeah, thing to, yeah, pra- yeah, have to praise it's... people for. But, it, uh, like, yes, okay, you, you botched it make it good yeah um like yes we we approve of when you do that but it's, it's so sad but just, to uh, be in a just situation don't, where just don't do bad in the first place yeah, yeah. we're all happy and it's i'll gladly so, pay you yeah it's so sad to be in a situation where where it's like well who who handled their massive mistakes best <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but. top 10 best handled mistakes of the year uh, odd numbers <laughs> oh my bad 11 <laughs> top 11 because let's be honest there's probably another one uh let's talk about something completely different that Marty actually hasn't played. You have not played StarCraft 2. I have not, no. You have not? No. Have you ever played a StarCraft game? I've played star- a little bit of Star. I played StarCraft 64. <laughs> okay, good. So, <laughs> so you're well-versed. So, yeah, so the, the answer is no. <laughs> um, so somebody who doesn't really play these games anymore, does the idea of pre-ordering a game and getting a prologue campaign appeal to you? Yes. Would you do that? Like, in general, is that appealing? Or for StarCraft, is that appealing? So, like, do you want to play StarCraft 2? No, but I'm just, I, mean, <laughs> I don't think so. No, no, but the very idea of, of of pre-ordering something and getting a prologue to it seems really cool. It's almost yeah. like uh, episode Dusk Guy on yeah. Final, Final Fantasy. Yeah. So and like episode Dusk Guy for Final Fantasy 15, if you pre-order StarCraft II Legacy of the Void right now, you get three prologue chapters for that called Whispers of Oblivion. And the interesting thing about that, like Dusk Guy, you can finish it and then nothing carries over. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm playing it now and I'm a li- I'm liking it a lot, but I'm also like ah, I don't have to do all this again. Well, I mean, here's here's the thing, uh, like my my attitude on these, like oh, pre-order it and you get this thing. You know what this used to be called? A demo. Yeah. And it yeah. used to be free for everyone to try out. And that really is what this is, but right. it, it, they're gating it behind a pre-order, which is brilliant and despicable at the same time. It's not. It's not brilliant because well, I mean, but it secures sales. People who want to play it are gonna buy it. People who want right. that demo will pay for the game, right? Because they're gonna buy it anyway, right? Absolutely. But like, like say I say I buy it and I play it, and I'm like, oh, I don't really like this. I wish I hadn't bought it. Sure. Like that, that's... as opposed to appealing to somebody who didn't necessarily want to play it, like Marty, who plays it and is like, oh man, like this, these missions are really cool. Maybe I will check this out. Mm-hmm. Pre-order. Right. So I, that that's kind of reverse traditional marketing. I don't I don't think I like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're not really you're not getting a new audience. No. You're just giving something to the people who are already going to buy your game as opposed to being like, hey, this is free for everyone. Yeah. Maybe you weren't even thinking about StarCraft 2, but play this, and if you like it, then you might pre-order Which it. is insane because it's, it's clearly already done. Like I can just play it start to finish, and it's fine. It's in yeah. good shape. <laughs> like Just give it away because yeah. it's good. I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, you're on, You're less – Enjoying it than me, I get the, no, I, the, the I, sense. I like it. Like I, I started playing it last night. I, I was like, oh, it's, you know, jump into this on hard because, like, oh yeah, I know how to play StarCraft. Uh, forgetting that I'm just kind of trash at Protoss. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> me too. It's my favorite faction, and I'm like, how do I literally do anything in this? I can warp things, places. I can. I got all these additional skills I don't understand. Yeah, I've, I've, I've spent most of my time as a Zerg player, and not a very good Zerg player, but, mm. uh, but uh, like, okay, I guess. Um, but uh, Protoss, I'm just completely helpless at so jumping in on hard uh meant that i d- actually didn't finish the third or didn't finish the nice. second mission good uh, because it, it on hard it throws quite a few things at you i almost beat it and then it just threw a wave of stuff at me that my army my army was was finishing off the last uh area and then just the 
they completely destroyed my two bases. Mm. Uh, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, the, the, the missions, uh, it's it's very much more StarCraft two. Yeah, it's very um, much in that same ph- philosophical right and, realm. And their, their their whole their whole thing, which I which I like, I like how they they've uh, they've done their campaigns, which is to basically abandon the campaign as training for multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, and do like, hey, here are some interesting scenarios we can build with these tools. Mm-hmm. Um, let's change the rules as we please. Let's let's make lava rise. Let's make uh, you know just just change random things. Let's throw in uh, new units you don't get in multiplayer mm-hmm. just to mess around with. Uh, and they they've continued that with with uh, Protoss uh, in, in Legacy of the Void. Um, the the missions that we've played we've play, I've played two of the three missions. Yeah. Uh, they don't do anything super novel. No, they're very much introductory missions because I think like this is literally the prologue for Legacy of the Void. I think you play right. three Zero Tool missions and then you switch over to Artenis. Right. So where the, you play these, like the real game. These missions appear to be concurrent with uh, with Heart of the Swarm. Uh, the first the first mission uh, that's kind of a very cool thing they did actually is to is to have you playing parallel to a mission that happened in Heart of the Swarm where Kerrigan is overrunning uh, a Terran base. Oh man. Um, I didn't actually get that far in Heart of the Swarm, so I yeah. didn't realize that. That's super cool. So, so yeah. the Protoss running around in that mission while you're playing Heart of the Swarm, right? That's so, cool. So that's it, it's concurrent to uh, a, a mission where you, where Kerrigan just has a huge swarm of Zerg that she's throwing against this this base mm-hmm. uh, in waves, and you're just you have to kind of navigate uh, your Protoss forces to rescue some captured Protoss um, as as she's doing that. So you and you know. If you get caught in the path of this of a Zerg wave, you're going to get killed. Yeah. Um, so you just have to, and you know, it's it's not a complex thing. It's like, oh, they're about to send a wave. Better not <laughs> wait. be there right now. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's just kind of a cool way to to integrate that into the. Yeah, the just it changes the pace and of how you play because mm-hmm. then you suddenly stop thinking about attacking and you go back to building and you just amass an army and you you kind of send them to one spot. And you're like, all right, I'm going to send them all there. They're going to wait. When the wave stops, we proceed. Right. Mm-hmm. But it, there is an interesting sense of urgency in that Kerrigan is destroying this base. And if she destroys this base before yeah, you finish the mission, you lose. It's a timer, yeah. yeah. Which is cool. And I, I do like the StarCraft II mission design. It, it kind of abandons the traditional st- build a big base and then endure. Right. Or, like, take out another base or take on waves and waves of enemies. Uh, although, the second mission is cool, too. Like, instead of building Vespine gas facilities, you have to, like, catch it as geysers explode. Right, which is, which is yeah, kind of an interesting thing that's not it's not really a super novel mechanic it's just like oh you have to go you have to go and pay, do do pickups to, sure. to get vespine instead of mine i don't need it to reinvent the wheel though like it's well that, that's that to me is what what makes the starcraft missions interesting is it how that how they how they throw a really novel thing at you like the 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 uh some of the most famous ones from from wings of liberty the original original release um was the day night cycle holdout. Oh season. yeah, like that was great. <laughs> Where, Where it was basically just Fortnite. Yeah, <laughs> go so out and scavenge during the day and come back at night and defend. Have yeah. you build? Exactly. Like you go out and, and destroy these infested uh, Zerg infested Terran buildings and uh, you destroy as many as you can because they're all going to spew out a whole bunch of infested Terrans oh, at night. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and you're building up your 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 base during the day to defend. Like it's it's really good. I think you would really like StarCraft too. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, it's just not your genre, I guess. Yeah. But. The structure of it is very much like an action RPG in a sense, in that you are you're doing these missions that are not RTS missions. They're basically like objective based stuff. You just have to be building an army, yeah. and then there's the meta game is really cool. I'm actually really excited to see how they handle it in Legacy of the Void. But uh, in Wings of Liberty, like you would upgrade different characters in different ways. Say, I mean, Abathur did the same thing in Wings of Liberty, where you would evolve Zerg in different ways, and you, I think you could go back and change it. You could devolve, right? Uh, I th- I think those were locked in. Okay. Oh yeah, right. Uh, I'm confused because it would let you preview it, right? Which but you can do in Wings of Liberty. No. Yep. Yeah. Which, which I, which I like a lot because you know it, it's like it gives you a reason to replay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I want to see more of that kind of stuff. Where and like the another very uh, inventive one on on the Terran side was uh, was they had lava that raised and lowered mm-hmm. periodically. So cool. Love that. Had, and you had to uh, you know mine a bunch of of. Uh, Crystals, you know, you had to move your base down there because Terran base buildings are mobile. You can yeah. fly them down there and then get out before it. You get like the the, yeah, the warning awesome. bells. You're like, oh my god, get everything off yeah, the ground right, now. Those, those map, the, right. the the Razor Hail maps or like the Avalanche maps <laughs> yeah. in, right. in Gears. Yeah. And the, the the thing that I love about those is that it, it really plays on the mechanic, the the specific mechanics of that side. Yeah. Um. And so far, and again, I haven't seen the third mission. Yeah. In, in Protoss, yet, but. Uh, so far, we haven't seen anything that really plays on the Protoss mechanics 
Uh, uh, there's a little bit of, of it in the first one where you secure the pylons. Like, the Terrans are using the Protoss technology. You secure those, and then you can warp units to those. Right, but I mean, you but it's, like, you very just, small. You could have just built those pylons yourself. Sure. Uh, you know, so it's, and it's you can. Not, you can just build a pylon anywhere. Right, so, so it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not doing anything uh, in the mission design that really takes advantage of the Protoss ability. Like, if you, had, if you had to, if they did some different spin on warping in units. And I'm sure they will. Like, I'm sure oh, there yeah. will be missions where it's like, hey, this Archon must survive this mission. You Absolutely. need to get them here, whatever, right? So are the... Are these three prologue missions just made for pre-orders, or are they going to be in the no, game? No, like this is the, the game, prologue of the game. Oh, so when you boot up the game, you're, st- you're just going to play these. Yeah, because the premise of StarCraft II has always been about Jim, Sarah, and Zeratul, mm-hmm. who are these like three leads for each faction. But when you play well, Legacy of the Void, you are mostly playing as Artanis, who's like this uh, Admiral Adama kind of character, mm-hmm. where he's leading the last of his people back home to like reclaim his homeworld. Thanks, Adama. <laughs> But yeah, the the, 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 the prelude is, is a zero tool. Yes, yeah, so you okay. play a zero tool, and then it goes into like the bigger, grander scheme of like you have a fleet, you are going to these worlds, uh, and then uh, like like previous ones, you're going to pick which planet you go to to make different choices of like, well, we could go here to do X or go here to do Y, but the opportunity is lost depending on where you go. Gotcha. And, and you're you're going to unlock a different unit, uh, you know, or something. We yeah, like know, as you level up, you unlock it. different units, and you can le- scale them differently. Okay. Depending on like what technology you embrace and stuff like and that. When does Legacy of the Void come out? Who knows? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's Blizzard, oh, man. Pre-order game that hasn't been. That's the thing is like their FAQ is like we have not announced a date. However, if you pre-order, you can get these sweet bonus missions. It'll early. be it'll early. be this year. It'll be this year. But you think so? I think so. Because uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this year's uh, granted Blizzard's one of those companies that doesn't care, but this year sure. is getting real busy. Yeah, I was gonna say like they also have the Overwatch beta coming this year at some point. Yeah, and maybe they don't want to get their own way. Maybe they see it as two totally separate yeah, audiences. I mean, are, yeah, the, they are very different audiences. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, and Mitch, I, I know you you were t- saying that you were enjoying the story, uh, man. Yeah, but I'm so into stupid Blizzard lore. <laughs> like I know there are people here in the office who love Warcraft, and I am into it. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, some of this is dumb. <laughs> and, like yeah. this is insane. I, but it's cool, and yeah. I'm into it. I've I have been so disappointed by StarCraft II's story. Oh, I love Rel- it. Relative to the first one. The first one is so personal and vengeful. And yeah, Wings of Liberty tries to capitalize on that. But I actually think it's Wings of Liberty, or uh, Heart of the Swarm, invalidates a lot of this stuff. Like the does. rescue of ca- spoilers, I guess, for this 20,000 year old PC game. <laughs> uh, like finding Sarah Kerrigan at the end of Wings of Liberty and kind of trying to liberate her and free her of the Zerg is really great. And then to have the first mission be her going, nah, forget it, and breaking out of prison is like, all right, well. Great. Glad I did all of that for twelve hours. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's like, oh well, she's she's you know in control of herself now. And yeah. Stuff. But it, but I'm I'm just so disappointed by it's like it's like oh there's an ancient prophecy. Uh, sure. Oh, like, uh, ancient prophecies. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Why why is it always a prophecy? Why is it always ancient? Yeah. yeah. This is a real this is a real fresh hot off the presses prophecy. Yeah. Marty, I'm gonna blow your mind. The prophecy says the world is gonna end. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just there was there was so much like in in the original Starcraft there was so much. That was just about like very very personal very uh, uh, you know it was, it was a power struggle kind of thing. yeah you know? whereas this one is it, they was like oh let's go over a cosmic scale of, you know unstoppable force and which they hinted at in the yeah and it, it has like, grown pretty significantly like you spent so much time in a bar talking to your friends in StarCraft Two Wings of Liberty and then I figured that like that this, sounds here that sounds like right a good game now uh, whereas Wings of Liberty is a lot more of like the back half of Wings. Of God, you so many Wings of Liberty. Heart of the Swarm <laughs> Wings of Liberty. Yeah. is a lot more like the back half of Wings of Liberty, where you're on a ship talking to your people and upgrading and learning about stuff. Yep. And I like that. It's very Mass Effect in that way. Yep. Um, but this, like, uh, Legacy of the Void, probably going to be a lot more like that, where it is grander scale. You are getting, like, it started with Jim Rayner and his people, like, their rebellion, and it's growing into, this is the end of the world that the Protoss are going to try to stop. Which yep. you see a little bit in Wings of Liberty. Like, yeah. Zeratul comes to you and says, hey, dude, here's the future. It sucks. Please help me. I mean, one of the problems with uh, a story that eschews from, like, a personal character story to massive, you know, global catastrophe scope is that generally that's not super interesting. Yep. Like, yeah. once, like, once it becomes about the fate of the universe, I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah. the universe is going to be fine because yeah. there's, no, there's no stake anymore. And like, that's why Star Wars was always so good because it was about that, yeah. but it was always about the people. Sure, yeah. And it wasn't about the end of the galaxy and, like, 
massive, massive battles. It's like, well, this small fleet is going to take down this big thing. Yeah, and it spent enough Good time luck. laying the br- groundwork to let you care about. Like, yeah. You care about everyone. Like, at the end of Return of the Jedi, there's f- six battles going on, but you care about every character in those battles. So when it cuts to them, like, you actually have vested interest. Yeah, whereas I care about Zeratul because he's a cool ninja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a cool so, lizard ninja. <laughs> so one, one more thing about about the, the, the prelude, or pre- what they call it? Prologue. Prologue, yeah. Um, is that they, ha- in the first two missions anyway, they haven't given us any new, new units to play with. And they're only three missions. Yeah. Which, which that's is. That's true. There are new units in the, if in you the have, multiplayer. Yeah, in the multiplayer, which you have access to as well. Yeah. Which I, I, haven't, I haven't played with yet. Cause, Me uh, either. Like, I just, I never got into Sargraph 2 multiplayer. I did for a while. Um, but. I loved Brood Wars so much. It's so, it's so draining. Um, <laughs> RTSs like are, in general are exhausting. Yeah. It's like you put so much of yourself into building this thing and committing to these strategies, and then you put it all in, and it doesn't work, and you're like, I failed. I'm oh, <laughs> a failure. And, and it's still exhilarating. Like, sure, yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I just don't have the time to, to, to become to, good. Yeah, and like if I'm not gonna if I'm not gonna, you know, really hone my strategy and and get get really good at it, I I feel kind of like I'm I wasting my time yeah <laughs> and that's my problem with a lot of and multiplayer I, I do, games I do fighting games it. too yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like I, I, I can appreciate them and enjoy them but it's like we have to play so many games for this job that I can never devote enough time to one to like Dan you're like what? Like I mean you guys Dan you have XCOM and Mitch has Dota but like I don't have I you play, don't have that game yeah I, I jump to everything so I'm never I'm like a what is it Master of None Flasher <laughs> of All or nailed it yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it that's that <laughs> classic catchphrase but, but yeah I, I'm well, I'm definitely excited to play it. I I liked Heart of the Swarm a lot. Uh, I I'll be interested interested to see if they do anything in the in the uh, main campaign that is that is a departure in the same way that, that Heart of the Swarm was. Heart of the Swarm was very MOBA influenced. Yeah. Um, Big time. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't know if they're going to because we haven't we haven't seen any any uh, hero characters on the map yet either. Uh, Zeratul is in the third mission. Oh yeah. Like okay. you play Zeratul. Okay. Um, but I don't know. If, I doubt he'll play as big a role as Kerrigan did. Like Ker- Kerrigan right. was, was, you know, front and center of every mission. Yeah, because in the in the Legacy of the Void campaign, it ends up being about Artanis's fleet, mm-hmm. and you are Artanis commanding stuff, and as opposed to running around as Artanis, which you might do, but it's very much like you have control of this fleet that can help you from space. That is your skills. Like you have an orbital strike, and you have right. drop ships, and you have all this cool stuff. But yeah, it is less about you know Jim Rayner running around the field rescuing his friends who've been imprisoned. But I, I just want to know if, if they're going to take a, a a very different mechanical slant to to the mission. Design. I hope so. Which I and if they do, it's like, well, why have this prologue that's not that? Yeah, yeah. this prologue is very very traditional. Starcraft. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Is this the last expansion? Yes. Is that what they call these yep. expansions? This is the last Starcraft two. Okay. And then I'll that's imagine okay. they're going to start something in Starcraft three, because well, another end of the world threat has arrived. I, I don't know if there's going to be a Starcraft three for a long long time. I would imagine they'll take a break. Yeah, I mean it's it's been when when did this game come out? Twenty ten. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean the the wait from Diablo two to three was a decade. Massive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Blizzard is in no hurry to turn out another one. Yeah. No, and it took them what like fifteen years to make a new IP with Overwatch. So. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah crazy. Right? How yeah. insane is that? Anyway, Marty, tell me a little bit about a PC game and a sci-fi game that you do care about. I do care about this. <laughs> Uh, no Man's Sky, which is our uh, IGN first for the month of July. Yeah, uh, Mitch, all three of us were uh, we we hung out with the the folks at uh, Hello Games at E3, and we spent a couple hours uh, talking with them and seeing uh, a demo of the game. And we sort of had our first like extended look at like here is what you are doing for twenty yeah. thirty minutes. And you it was, can you can watch all of us sit in the background of that video. As yeah, Ryan which I'm still. It. Real great video. Still kind of weirded out in the background. <laughs> yeah, we're just standing there, like, like smiling, going, wow, um, the whole time. But uh, we were talking, like, this game had always been this sort of nebulous thing of, like, it's just, it was like a bag of promises that didn't really a make. A bag of promises. A bag of promises. It I didn't love that. really make a whole lot of sense. Like, I'm like, I want to do all yeah. this stuff, but I don't know how it all connects together. Uh, and seeing it at E3 was sort of the first time where it started to really click for me and make sense. Yeah. Um, in the way that, uh, so we landed on a planet and we started exploring and we pulled our gun out and started 
blowing up pieces of the environment, which Dan, you're gonna like. You I like do. the fact that you can just blow apart the environment and I, blow holes and things. That is a that is a killer feature for me in virtually <laughs> any game. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's great, and you can just and like, but it's not just cosmetic. Like you can burrow down into a cave underneath the ground and find stuff, or you get like ore, or some sort of resource for yeah. blowing apart rocks. Um, but the big thing to me that's sort of I was like, oh, this makes sense now, is that there's pretty much a GTA esque wanted system on yep. planets. And yeah, if you're gonna be like a scoundrel and start killing animals and blowing things apart and it's high risk and, and shooting ships, like you're gonna get to cool stuff, but like space cops are gonna come <laughs> after you and space cops are not gonna be happy with you. And yeah. so we saw that and I was like, Oh, this is the first as simple as that mechanic is. Like there's a system here. And I'm like, oh things are this play. makes sense. It starts tying things together. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I sort of understand now, like the role playing element of well i can be this this or that but there might be consequences to one or the other so i'm curious from your perspective because you are notorious in the ign office or at least notorious between marty and i as we talk about like is it a game of course it's a game and of <laughs> and no man's sky for a long time was a dan staple not a game game where, no, like no. you flew around you looked at stuff but you didn't really do anything all right yeah so so <laughs> so your mind is Changed from what it was, I would assume. I mean, there are there are you know objectives in sure. there. Like there's there are things to do. There there are things that there are that beacons measure, now. Yeah, that, that <laughs> yeah. measure that measure your progress. There are yeah. there are obstacles between you and things that you want. Yeah. Uh, it you know basically for me a game is something that that throws things out there and says, hey, I bet you can't get this. Try and do it. Um, and it does that mm-hmm. uh, because it, it has like a trading economy and things yep. like that, that that will that will allow you to accumulate wealth and upgrade your ship. Mm-hmm. And whether or not there's an endpoint, which they're probably I mean, there's the center of the of the universe, like it's, it's saying like oh you, everyone should try and I guess the center of a galaxy. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, that's like oh you're trying to get here. It's like that they have set a goal. Yeah, get to the center of the galaxy. That center of the galaxy. We need to do a feature on what we think is that center yeah. of the galaxy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a note. Make, make a, a note. Make a note. I'll make a note. Well, like we'll this. never like remember a, this one. No, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the beacon stuff too that you mentioned. Of like, you're gathering a bunch of stuff, and then you sort of send the information into space, and you're like, "This is all the stuff I discovered. I just yeah. discovered this weird cow thing. This is the planet I have. And look at that rock." I also like that the beacon system is like, okay, I've landed nowhere near a beacon whatsoever, and I'm gonna <laughs> venture out far into the world, and I'm gonna do stuff and cause chaos and uh, kill people and take their stuff mm-hmm. and get some minerals and get a bunch of do all this stuff that will make me a ton of money Hmm. but now the wanted system has me being pursued relentlessly by atsts and spaceships and (laughs) weird laser gun man and i need to get to my ship which is very far away and then i need to fly until i can find a beacon and unless you deposit all of that information and minerals and gear into the beacon you lose it all Mm -hmm. so it's like weirdly roguelike esque yeah, in that totally. sense, where yeah. the stuff you're doing is constantly at risk. So there's this sense of like incredible reward that you've collected all this stuff, yeah. but until you survive and get out with it, like yeah. <laughs> you may no, lose it totally, all. To, to bring up the game I bring up on literally every podcast ever, it <laughs> reminds me of Dark Souls, where Perfect. it's like, man, I'm doing this rad run. I have so many souls, but holy crap, I need to find a bonfire. Yeah, I gotta find a bonfire. I'm like, well, if I go a little bit further and then I die, and I'm like, Marty, you're an this idiot. is basically you just gotta find a space bonfire space. and shoot. <laughs> sort of, what is a beacon if not a space bonfire? Exactly. Yeah. You just gotta upload your uh, your souls into yeah. space. Update your drivers. <laughs> PC <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, yeah, I think twenty minutes with this game, like the twenty minute demo we saw, was enough for me to go like, oh, like okay, I finally understand what this is. Because mm-hmm. I went from not really believing it was ever gonna happen to thinking like, man, maybe this will come out this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I, I think for me, the thing they've they've still got to really sell me on is. Uh, like the whole combat systems, yeah. Uh, because, like, yeah, you can have those things coming after you, trying to kill you, right? But fighting them has to be fun, sure. right? Like, and at what point am I like, I literally can't right. fight them. I don't have a weapon that can take yeah. them. Yeah. And and what we what we saw of the of the combat thus far was not super interesting. Yeah, it was sort of like a space pistol that just blew stuff up. And I'm like, well, are there going to be like, can I get a space rifle? No. Or a space so the way it works gun? is that's the that gun is the one gun you have. But the version we saw and the version you can see in the footage we have on IGN is, like, the version Sean made. The the creative director made for that. Your upgrades and the items you buy and the pieces you you equip that weapon with might make it a different weapon. Oh, gotcha. So it's a, it's, a mo- it's a single weapon that's modular. It's like a tool. It's, yes. your, it's your No Man's Sky tool. Yes, because yeah. it is also what you use to mine the planet. And those have mods as well. Like, everything is modular. Your, yeah. your suit, like your EVA suit or yeah. whatever that, like, lets you survive in the atmosphere of yeah. certain planets. Like, you need different suits to go to different places. You might go somewhere that's like, well, if you land here, you're going to die. Yeah. So don't go there until you come back. Yeah, come like back that. with a better that's suit. like in Super Metroid, how you need a certain suit in order to get to the fire zone because you're going to burn up. Basically, yeah. yeah. So this is Metroid's Space Dark Souls. You, 
So like the, the the multiple gun sounds promising, but like just the the combat mechanics we've seen so far yeah. have been incredibly basic. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. very Point, very basic. Shoot, run away. Uh, plus, like there's deliberately no reason to kill those animals except in self defense. Uh, like they've deliberately said uh, there's no reward for doing it. Yeah, which is interesting that there's no like you need to eat system right. or you can you know bring this like, bring a body cry. back for research. Yeah, yeah, right. or you can skin it or whatever. Yeah. So w- without without an incentive to attack those things. Uh, why would I like possibly why, do and why that? are they even there? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're scanning them. It's like, well, I've scanned them, and now what? Yeah. Um, so I think they they need to make those uh, all the the unique life form life forms we find. They need to have their more to do with them. Yeah. yeah. And I would imagine there will be ones that are more predatory, or you'll find like we saw one in the trailer like ages and ages ago that was enormous. Yeah. yeah. It's like oh, that's like a literal dinosaur. Well, yeah. <laughs> that but, thing will probably kill me if I approach it. But yeah. again, it's like you you see it. And then what do you do with it? Yeah, man, I would love a sort of ability to. I mean, I don't. I doubt this is in the game, but almost like a space Noah's Ark kind of thing of like, oh I want to grab a male and a female of every get them <laughs> off of every monster. Yeah, or to be, the ability to be like, hey, I'm gonna introduce. I'm gonna be like Johnny Depp and take my dogs to Australia, and I'm gonna take all these weird giraffe things to this other planet and see if I'd muck everything up. Like, oh man, that's just sort like, of like the idea of just like playing around wrecking with it, being the like, ecology. What can I do? Yeah, yep. like can I make an animal extinct? And they'd be like, hey, this little bear thing's cool. I'm going to kill all of them so no one ever sees it again. <laughs> <laughs> Not even going to document it. It'll just yeah. never have existed. <laughs> I actually asked Sean about that. He said you, it's theoretically possible but very hard to do. Right. I mean, the idea that these are literally planet-sized planets is insane. <laughs> yep. Yeah, just that, and also that whole zoom out of like, here is one planet. Now we're gonna zoom out forever, and that is every planet. I'm just like, this is terrifying. <laughs> it's too much game. It's yeah. the Skyrim problem Danger. on a larger scale, where yeah. they're like, hey, you can go do anything, and I'm like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play something right with now. an objective. I'm gonna play Minesweeper, <laughs> yeah. the twenty by twenty. <laughs> Yeah, and there's you know the the exploration aspect of it was you know, a big part of Skyrim. Yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, I'm gonna go out and find stuff. Uh, to just you know. I don't know what I'm going to find. I'm just going to go in an off in a direction, and yeah. something interesting might happen. So as long as interesting things keep happening in No Man's Sky, then it could be you know limitless. Yeah, interesting I think the big thing is just yeah, as long as they keep delivering the unexpected. Like if I sit down every night and play the game for even half an hour, and if I'm like, oh man, I didn't see that before, or man, that's a weird thing. You're like, that's a, I haven't seen ships interact like that. Then it's worth it. If every yeah. night I go in and I come back and I have a story. Like, totally. And I think that's really what they're relying on. They're relying not on, like, oh, I went in and I scanned an animal and then I traded some goods. They're relying on you warp into a planet and suddenly pirates warp in and start raiding a a faction ship. And you're like, oh, my God. And then I, like, I got involved and I shot down the pirates and they gave me a discount at their store or whatever. Like, things like that. Or you're on a planet and you see uh, one animal hunting another and you can decide to engage or not. Like, small anecdotes like that, I think, are what are going to be the big conversation. Totally. But I mean, having having to you know make those events happen, like there's got to be a certain amount of scripting to happen. Yeah, to, sure. To make yeah. that happen. So whether they can, you know, it's a very small team. Of yeah. guys, uh, you know, people working on this game. Whether they have the resources to populate it with enough of those, you know, random feeling events, dynamic events. Uh, you know, it's a question <coughs> that, that mm-hmm. you know we're gonna have to sit down with it for a lot longer than 20 minutes to find out. Yep. Hopefully, we get to do that. Very very soon, and it is coming out concurrently on PC in PC with uh, PS4. PS4. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's all whenever open it comes out. Yeah, it's this year or next year. Hopefully this year. Yeah, they're, they're I really want to play that game. <laughs> they're talking PS4, you know, real big, but like when they showed it, it was on PC. Yeah, yeah. and they're talking PS4 because you know Sony has like a partnership with them. Yeah, yeah. I imagine Sony's helping with some of the dev. Um, pay, I imagine, yeah, stuff. we're paying for it. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about games that have already come out this year, boys. I like games. Uh, you like games. If you like games so much, Marty. Oh, no. <laughs> F. Why don't you merit <laughs> I don't like uh, games. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about our PC game of the year. Ooh. Uh, everyone at IGN has been talking about, like, they're, like we're at the halfway point of the year. Mm-hmm. We're through July now. Uh, what What is the game, like, the one that stands out for you this year that is, like, this is the best thing I've played on PC all year? Ooh. So the two things I immediately went to are sort of cheats. Because okay. one's not done and one was halfway done last year. Uh, so okay. it's uh, Broken Age Act 2, which okay. is now, I guess, the complete. It's just Broken Age. Yeah. Um, which I thought Act 2 wasn't quite as strong as Act 1, but that be I thought Act 1 was Act one was probably my favorite game of last year. So, you know, that's... Okay. That's, so that's your game of the year two years in a row was the same was thing? Two, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just as someone who, who grew up on old school adventure games, especially a lot of them that Tim Schafer made, uh, it, it's a game that I just thought was gorgeous and smart and funny and i really dug the puzzles and and 
just absolutely adored those characters. I agree with so some of that. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I'm not to just dump on your choice, but like no, that, I think that game, I think that game is really pretty and really funny. Like Tim Schafer makes games that I think are among the funniest in the world, mm-hmm. and games that I just can't play. Yeah, point and click is just so not for me. I don't know why that genre never clicked for me. I tried so hard to play through Broken Did Age. Did it point and click? I, uh, I was gonna let it lie. Nope. This will be Dan's first and die. last episode <laughs> of uh, Ten Overclocked. Uh, but yeah, the puzzles and stuff. I got to the point where like every point and click game, I couldn't figure it out, and I'm like, I. Forget it. I'm done. I'm gonna yeah, go play but, something that respects my time. You're you're a victim of what's called adventure game logic. Yeah. You know, where but I totally understand. Like yeah. that game is so cool, and mm-hmm. I I love watching the documentary of how they made that. It's yeah, just that's a fascinating, another insane. Cool project. Like anyone who has you know watching the 20 parts of the uh, was it Player Two? Yep. Documentary. Player, player Two uh, Productions. Yeah. Uh, that just it's it's one of the, like one of the best insights into game dev and the horrors that go behind making any video game. Uh, so that and then sort of along the same lines, it's not done yet, but. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands. I think two of the episodes have released this year. Yeah. Uh, one was last year, I believe. Yep. It was, um, uh, I think, December, March. Yeah. Um, so episode two and three are uh, among some of my favorite things Telltale's done yet. Yeah. And that's coming from someone who I like Borderlands 2, but like I'm not crazy about it. And you don't so care go- about the world. I don't really care about the world too much. And so going well, into what it. What about uh, Handsome Jack? He's a real handsome boy. He's so handsome. But going into it, uh, going into this, I was like assuming, I was like, oh, whatever. But then I play it, I'm like, oh, man, it, you don't have to care about Borderlands or no. like this. It's just like an amazing Western con story that, again, is super funny. And again, the characters, after three episodes, I'm just like, all right, I love Every slash single one of all them. these characters yes. in the best way. And yeah, I'm, I mean, we have two episodes left. I'm I think Telltale said they're try they're going to wrap up in 2015. Uh, <laughs> Believe it when I see it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are my those are my twosies so Pretty far. Pretty good picks. Yeah, I haven't played a ton of Witcher yet. I've really liked what I've played of Witcher so far. Yeah, um, I, that's a game I wish I had more I played time. Played like ten hours of it. someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just started kind of cracking into it. Um, although I guess there's, there's the 1.7 patch coming out, 1.07 patch mm-hmm. coming out pretty soon, which is supposed to add. A bunch of fixes for a bunch of problems. So cool. Uh, maybe I'll wait for that. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've got a really good stream of DLC for that. That's just free. Yeah. Plus they have the expansion coming this year. Yeah. I, I feel I feel kind of bad because I, I think the the two biggest PC games uh, out this year so far I haven't really played very much of. One of them cool. is, is Witcher, uh, and the other is Pillars of Eternity. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Which uh, did that really come out this year? I thought yeah. it was March. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was I was kind of surprised too. I, I was going back over the list last night. And I'm like, wow. That was, yeah. That was not super long ago, yeah. but. Uh, they're already talking about the expansion and everything, um, but I think the the b- the best PC game I've played this year is probably um, City Skylines. Oh, nice! Wow! Which, yeah, yeah, man. Another one I forgot came out this year, and another one that I forgot was really good. Yeah, and it, it's and it's you know getting steadily better. They're putting out free content for it, which is nice. Great mod support. Like the community is making a lot of really good, useful, fun things for that. Yep. Uh, yeah. If you if you like city builders, that is the one you should buy. Wow. And if uh, I'm assuming if Batman, if the port was super solid, that would be right up there with you. Because you I, gave yeah, nine point two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that yeah. game. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but uh, and yeah, I, I played some of the, of the PC version. Um, yeah, because it, it does work. Yeah. Uh, for most people, I have an Nvidia card that probably has something to do with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the tank battles are kind of funny on on PC because. Uh, you can very easily target, target the, whatever you want. Well, <laughs> they've got all the tanks have a little glowing fit yeah. on them, and you yeah. can you can kill them with the Vulcan cannon, not yeah. the not the main gun, yeah. the Vulcan cannon. Yeah. So I, I just I've gone through tank battles just going boop 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 boop, taking them all out with yep. the, with the Vulcan cannon, just booping them. Never never Classic Batman. And never fired the the main gun. That's amazing. So, but yeah, you know, the performance problems are a little bit, yeah. You know, uh, they're, they're still pronounced. Like it still stutters. It's still yeah. Uh, I still get some <coughs> some weird glitches. Mm-hmm. And Man, it's li- still at 30 frames a second. I like that we all have weird esoteric choices. Like I, I say Dota 2, you monster. <laughs> Dota 2 is a game that does exist in this year of our Lord, 2015. Dota, Dota 2 Reborn. Oh, it's coming. It's coming, Marty. It's in beta. Uh, no, I I think it's cool that our game of the year isn't as simple as, oh, it's Batman, the big AAA thing, yeah, or The Witcher, yeah. the big AAA thing. Like You have this adventure game that finished up, yeah. or this other one. Like You have this city-building sim. Like all these are really good PC games, and I think Her Story is yeah. the coolest, most unexpected thing I have played in a long time. I, I liked Her Story a lot, I, although I foresee that becoming kind of a, a mini game that we see in AAA games. Oh my god, like, I would be so okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would too, because I, I like it a lot. I, li- I like that mechanic. Uh, just that that trail of breadcrumbs it leaves. It's like, oh, yeah. I, they said this, I'll look for that, and they said that, and I'll and look I really for this. So I bet a lot of folks don't know what Her Story is. Okay, so Her Story yeah. is a 
I <laughs> I started that and I'm like 2D, 3D, first person, third person. Like I don't know, man. Uh, the premise of this it's game is you are game. Yeah. you are investigating a murder mystery, and everything else outside of that you don't really know, and you just kind of mm. discover by operating a computer in the game. Like the entire game takes place with you at a keyboard punching in words and dissecting an interview that has been chopped up into tons and tons and tons of little pieces. Which, why would they do that? But anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> there is a narrative explanation, like, oh, the tapes were corrupted, or then they're all broken up. Um, but basically, it is a series of videos that you then sift through by searching single words, double words, whatever, names, places, terms, things like that. And in the transcript of the interviews... It draws from that, and you feel like, okay, I'm going to search murder. It finds every instance of the word murder in mm-hmm. these interviews with this woman who may or may not have killed her husband, and there may or may not be other stuff going on. And it starts out innocuous enough, and you're like, oh, let's like find out what the murder is all about. But you discover more about her as a person and her life and, and her, her story. problems and yeah. her story. Uh, and it it is a fascinating narrative about a person mm-hmm. and problems and life that I've just really enjoyed. I also think it's, it's the smartest detective game there is. Ooh, the Vanishing of okay. Ethan Carter is really good. Batman is obviously really good. Yeah. But this does such different cool things. You are actually investigating. You're playing this role of someone who is getting captivated by this story and I ended up having like pages and pages of serial killer I loved. notes. I loved like, I feel like the only times that's happened recently is like the Vice 6 and Fez. Fez. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's cool to like hear her mention, like you'll be on the trail of something. And you're just you're into it, and you're like, ah, oh, man, she's talking a lot about this topic, and I'm not going to spoil anything because mm-hmm. just please play her story and figure it out for yourself. Uh, and she'll make a passing mention of something else or someone else or a, a an event that happened, and it's mm-hmm. clearly significant because there's nothing in this game that is just there for no reason. Yeah. And you make a note of it, and you make another note of something else, and you just end up pages of names and places and weird stuff that happened. And I just I found that game incredible from top to bottom Love and it. as soon as i finished it i wanted to go back and start over knowing what i know now yeah to learn more super cool that's a that's a cheapie right yeah it's like five ten bucks that's that's cheapy that's a cheapie of the week <laughs> cheapy of the week marty let's talk about free of the week i don't like F money at cheapy. all who needs to spend money in any capacity every human being uh yeah you guys play portal i've played the game you heard portal, of portal? Yeah, I've, I've little in past i've game. ported <laughs> uh did you guys see portal stories mel I have not seen it. Yeah, I don't know what Man. this is. So it's a free mod for Portal 2. It's not Valve made, but they kind of endorsed it because they're like, yeah, whatever, you can just just play it. I don't yeah. care. Uh, Portal Stories Mail is a non-canonical, essentially, prequel to Portal 2 uh, set in the, the facility run by Cave Johnson. And essentially you are just somebody who's there before the events of Portal 2, and it's weird and funny and quirky and smart in the same way Portal 2 is. Obviously, the production value is not quite as good. I think the writing is not quite as good. I think the puzzles are not quite as good. Yeah. But, man, like, it's Valve. It's really hard to live up to yeah, that. Yeah, totally. And I think they make a really good use of the portal systems, the the portal weapon, the bouncy gels, the slick, slidey gels. Is there, like, VO? I mean, there's writing? Yeah, so they don't have... Uh, the, Obviously, uh, uh, J.K. Simmons. That's his name, yes. Yeah. But they have someone who... It's a guy who is, like, good enough. Yeah. And he's funny, and the Cave Johnson lines are really good. Yeah. And essentially, you are just moving from one place to another learning what happened uh and there's this other like the sense that like something has happened here some time has passed between the prologue and when you wake up and everyone's trying to convince you in the VO, like oh nothing everything's fine here nothing no time's passed you, had, you just had a quick nap and everything's okay yeah. and the farther you get the more you realize like man like it's been a while it's been a long time <laughs> like how long have i been out and what happened here how did and, this happen and my underwear is on backwards <laughs> yeah <laughs> So you're just you play as this woman Mel, and you're just exploring a different part of the Cave Johnson facility in the Portal Two timeline, and it's just really cool that this awesome. exists. And yeah. I don't know where it came from, but uh, that's like the coolest thing I've played in a long time, the, er, in like this month aside from her story. That's right, it's and free? it's free. It's just like a free mod. How do, how do people find it if they just search? So on Steam, if you search Portal Stories colon M E L, this will come up. Nice. And like those, those uh, like source source mods these days, like you don't even need to own a uh, like you don't need to own Portal. 2 you do need to game. own Portal Two oh, to play yeah, this. Okay. Yes, and I think that's why Valve allowed it to happen. It's like if you want to play this thing that we are allowing to happen, you have Fire to own our game. I mean, Valve, you know, allows everything to happen. Like they, they, they yeah, they don't care. Yeah, they're, they're super, like yeah, you know, that's it's a mod, right? It's a yeah. total conversion mod. That's why we uh, have all those great Half Life episodes, the, right? <laughs> but the only the only thing uh, that you know Valve. You know, sort of endorses it by saying, "Okay, we're going to put this up on Steam as basically a you know distributing it through Steam as its own thing, mm-hmm. basically." So that that um, you know kind of elevates it above a lot of other mods. They did the same thing with uh, Black Mesa. 
Yeah. That's right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Did Black Mesa ever finish, or is it still just that weird It's intro? almost done. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. It just has, uh, it doesn't have the, uh, doesn't you don't have have the, the zen part. You don't have to finish. You don't have to get the zen. That's fine. Yeah. That, <laughs> well, <laughs> and that is the weakest part of yeah. Half-Life. So. Yeah. I never played Half-Life, so I think I might go and do that. Like, you should Half-Life? No. I, like, I've, I played a PC game that Mitch didn't. I, uh, so I've played it. I've just never finished it. Gotcha. I've dabbled and been like, man, this game is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> Half-Life <laughs> is hard. It is. Um, but it's cool, and it holds up, and there's a lot about it that's just still smarter than sure. most other shooters. Awesome. Yeah, I, I started playing Black Mesa, but you know, you know what made me stop, actually, is the, the load times. Are, oh, are, man. That's still a problem. If you go back and play Half-Life 2, it's still great. Oh, yeah. Yep. But, man, every time you walk in a tunnel and you're like, I have 15 seconds of loading ahead of yep. me. <laughs> that's a, that's so an annoying. An 11-year-old game, and that, okay, that's what it was like back yep. then. So I'll be curious to see. Um, like, Dota 2 is – real quick, Marty, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you can Dota 2. Uh Dota 2 just got the Reborn update that we mentioned really briefly. That is Source 2. They are updating it with Source 2. Like, it's Valve's new engine. Dota is the pet project that they're testing it with. I'd be very curious to see if people start using Source 2, which is highly moddable, more so than Source, to go back and, like, update Half-Life 2 and fix the loading times or upgrade the textures or add new episodes. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised to see Valve port Half-Life 2 over to Source 2. Uh, They did the same thing with Half-Life 1 when they put out... um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just Half-Life Source, right? Yes. Um, Interesting and, you know, to they, see if they'll do it with TF or Counter Strike. Yeah, I mean they, they didn't do, uh, they didn't like redo it. They didn't update the textures or anything. They just yeah. straight straight up ported it over. I think things like water were were uh, were kind of you know enhanced with the yeah. with the new engine effects. But but all the, all the models and textures and everything were just straight up. I don't know if over. they will do that this time because Source Two is the new platform for them to continue adding to their games. Mm-hmm. So I think you might see Source Two for Counter Strike. I don't think you'll see it for TF2, which they're not really supporting. It's almost entirely community-led. They have updates every now and then, but it's not significant enough to warrant like moving the entire thing over to Source 2. Mm-hmm. I think with the original Source, the reason they did Half-Life was a showcase. Like, hey, look, like this is what the new engine allows. It looks better. It plays better. Whatever. With Source 2, I think it's mostly we have these games that we want to survive for a very long time in Dota 2 and Counter-Strike, and we're going to bring those over. I think that, that uh, the way Valve works is... Kind of unusual, uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. but it's I, a I weird, mean, cool yeah. company, man. Yeah, and like th- there was there was no real reason for them to do Half Life Source. Good like, point. There, there was no no like it, it wasn't an engine showcase. Half Life Two was the engine showcase. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, th- this was just them basically preserving it. Uh, sure. And, and making it making it easier for people to play on a modern system, and I think they'll want to do that with Half Life Two as well. I wonder if they relied on that. Like, we're gonna put it on Source because you know Source is moddable. Somebody else will remake this. Mm-hmm. Like, did they just wait for the Black Mesa guys to do it? And they're like, boom, jackpot, we did it. <laughs> I, I don't think that was part of their plan. Um, yeah, it worked out really was, well for them. Yeah, I think that was just a passion project because, I mean, th- those guys saw kind of the state of Half-Life Source, and it's like, yeah. well, this, this, you know, it's nice that it's on the new engine, but it's not an updated game. Yeah. Um, and they, they wanted to see that, so they did it. That was such a weird company, getting into hardware and stuff. I'm excited to see all the Steam Machine stuff. Have you played with the Valve controller? Uh, not since... Uh, not I haven't played with the final revision. Okay, yet. I played it at CES last it's year. It's so weird. I don't, I don't, I don't, think don't know how to feel about it yet. I don't think I've used it since they added the the uh, the analog stick. Oh yeah. Last time I used it. Oh I yeah. Had, no, I, I haven't either. The, I used it at GDC nice. and it didn't have that. Yeah, it, it had, was still the two pads. Yeah, which I, I kind of like the two pads. But I did I, too. I don't. I, I don't play like platformers very much. So. Mm-hmm. I want to play Dota two and see if I can like win a game yeah. <laughs> with that controller. Probably not. Well, I mean, that's that's the line on it. Is like you you yeah you can play Dota. You just can't. You just can't win. I love that. I love that they were so open about like oh. Good luck, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Portal Stories Mail. That's the free game of the week. Check mm-hmm. it out. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, just tweet at us at IGM. We're going to get an email set up so you guys can send us letters. We'll uh, send topic suggestions. Uh, if there's something in the news or something going on in PC, uh, we want to know about it. Tweet at me. I am at Mitchie D. Dan is at Dan Stapleton. Yes, I am. Nailed it. Marty is at McBiggity. Yes, two sir. G's. Two T's. Uh, any parting thoughts before we go? No, this we is did great. It. We and did it. Gonna be a, we did a PC podcast. We're gonna we we're gonna be building. We're gonna be building a PC podcast. Uh, yeah, we'll one piece segments, at a cool time. things. We'll have cool people. Yeah, we have a, a lot of plans for the show. So mm-hmm. please tweet at us individually. Let us know your thoughts. Send your feedback, suggestions. Very open to it. This PC podcast is very modular. Mm-hmm. We're open to putting Upgrading new parts it. in uh, and out. Just please get us out of here before this. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for uh, watching, listening. However you consume this, uh, we'll be back next week with Overclocked episode two. Thank you so much. Overclocked. <laughs>